so there is a four day old baby who didn't pass stool for first two days then had a smear of meconium but then has been developing abdominal distension so this is a fairly common scenario and the distension is quite significant in this case uh, the x-ray shows gaseous distension of the bowel so we admitted the baby kept the baby npo IV fluids were started, antibiotics were started because there is significant bowel dilatation. So what would be the commonest differential in this scenario? We'll keep it brief and then we will go to the slideshow that we discussed. So, I mean, I think that uh, it's the differential is very similar. I mean, that we have uh, some sort of narrowing somewhere um, or some sort of ileus, like everything else. I mean, just because the baby's a few days older, um, you know, hasn't passed stool. That was kind of more of the presenting sign before the abdominal distension, before the puking. So you think, OK, this is probably more distal. So in addition to like a colonic atresia, obviously somebody Obviously, it's not anal atresia because there was a bit of a, a smear. But the two things that I would kind of also have on my list were, is this like a um, small left colon? So a lot of uh, diabetic uh, infants of, um, of diabetic mothers, the uh, whole left colon, so kind of the descending colon can be a much thinner caliber than it's supposed to be. And that can kind of present in this way. And really, it's just a lot of time waiting for it. Babies can also have meconium plugs where they just have like a bunch bunch of meconium just like stuck in there or meconium ileus which happens kind of in cf or cystic fibrosis where the meconium is like really sticky and it's not moving forward um or you'd also be thinking of Hirschsprungs. And Hirschsprungs is where the nervous system of the gut isn't fully formed. So the middle layer of the gut has its own autonomic nervous system. Like I'm not thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, cause peristalsis now. That's happening without me thinking about it. So the middle layer of the gut has a nervous system and it kind of, that nervous system populates the gut from the mouth and then all the way down to the colon. So after the gut is formed, the nervous system is still coming in and innovating it. Sometimes the nervous system doesn't reach the very end of the rectum and it kind of stops halfway down the colon or a little bit further down the colon. So that last little bit of rectum doesn't have any nerves to squeeze it out. So what ends up happening is that it's unable to squeeze. So just above that uninnovated area. So where there are nerves, all that, all the stool and the secretions and everything build up right there. And that's what you call the transitional zone, that space between where you don't have nerves to where you do have nerves. And that would be Hirschsprungs. This is a very typical way for Hirschsprungs to present. So I'm going to say this for anybody that's still listening now. If you are referring a baby because of abdominal distension or bilious emesis, you should be doing as part of your physical exam you should be doing a rectal exam to make sure that this or to decrease the likelihood or to kind of give you more idea of whether this is Hirschsprungs or not. Normally, the distal part, the Hirschsprungs is very, very distal. So the way that I do rectal exams is I take a Q-tip. So, you know, one of those things that people used to put in their ears and then put it with a lubricant like KY jelly and insert it very gently into the anus and into the rectum, just up a couple of centimeters. Normally, if it is Hirschsprungs, especially if it's distal and that's the majority, you pull it out, the stool will come like barreling out because you've pushed it past the area without the nerves. So I cannot tell you how many times we've had babies that have been transferred from other places that we've done this and you feel like the diagnosis is right there. If you're putting that in and the stool comes out, I mean, I've had to change scrubs, you know, like completely like covered in poop, then you've pretty much got a diagnosis of Hirschsprung. So that really should be part of your physical exam. Yes, I mean, uh, and uh, ileal atresia and things like that can have meconium as well because atresias might happen due to the vascular loss later on. So passing meconium doesn't rule it out. So it doesn't rule um, out the complete obstruction. Absolutely. I think we will not go into the details of treatment of sprung like syndromes, but uh, you beautifully uh, discussed the overview of it. And of course, there can be a short segment or long segment sprung, and the presentation can be different accordingly. Bubble atresias are a big topic altogether. <laughs> So, 